happy monday everybody welcome to it's kim live i am it's kim if you've never seen this show before hi my name is Kim, and I like to talk about pop culture and things that I care about. Um, we tend to talk about a lot of different topics, but it usually comes back somehow to psychology, mental health, because I love that stuff. I also love Britney Spears. We talk about her a lot. But currently, we have been focusing a lot on the Diddy Gate story, the absolute wildness of all of this, the twists and turns. And yes, you guys are right in the chat. It is Tuesday. It is the Tuesday. It is the Tuesday. I am so incredibly used to getting on here the first time in the week and saying Monday, but it is indeed Tuesday because we didn't have stream yesterday because of the eclipse. So I am so ready to get into today. We've got lots of stuff to go <laughs> to go through. It is so good to see everybody here. If you've never seen the show, here's usual, here's how it normally works. At least we go into the main stories, which is what you see in the thumbnail. We do that first. Then we go into halftime where I communicate with my lovely, lovely community of space angels whom are all filing in right now. Thank you all so much for being here. I know this is a bit of a different time and day and I'm so happy to see you guys here. Um, and then we have a section towards the end of the show called What the What, where we look at something around the internet that is funny, interesting, wild. I haven't seen it. It's all made thanks to my lovely co-pilot producer sister who puts it all together for me. So I react authentically along with you guys. So we all get to experience it together. Then we just kind of have our last call at the end. We just talk about stuff. If you're watching on the replay, there will be timestamps. Um, I try to get those done as quickly as possible once the stream is done. So if you are in the replay crew, hello. And I hope that you can uh, maneuver around wherever you want, or you're welcome to watch the whole show in its entirety as it was originally presented, I guess. Um, I do have to say thank yous right off the bat um, to uh, Heather. Thank you so much for the PayPal you sent me yesterday. That was so incredibly kind of you. I will be sharing that with producer sister as you asked. I'll probably see if I can get her some of her favorite... Um, Coca-Cola's. She likes the uh, the bottled mix in Coca-Cola's. So I may try to spoil her with that, if that's okay with you. And then uh, General Scott, thank you so much for the PayPal, who informed me that he found a Sunny Eclipse t-shirt on Etsy. For those of you that don't know, Sunny Eclipse is a part of the, uh, the lore behind the Space Angels name, um, which I thought was very cute. So thank you for letting me know about that. And then I also have to say thank you so much to General Scott for starting off the memberships today for the lovely Space Angels by gifting five memberships. So we have five new angels. Welcome to membership. I'm so happy to see all of you come and join us. Thank you so much, General Scott. And we are Team Odd. Here we go. Off, off to the races, everybody. I have to see how you guys are doing. I'm just looking through the chat. It's so good to see all of you. Let me know what you guys thought of the eclipse yesterday. Because that was that was pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. Um, part of why we didn't have the stream yesterday was because of the eclipse. My internet service provider actually let everybody in our area know that because of the extra strain they were expecting, they were expecting the internet to give out um, during the afternoon. And it did. It did three times. <laughs> So I was very nervous about doing the show and constantly getting like dropped and then back in and dropped and then back in. And I just was like, oh, this is not going to go well if that's what happens. And that is exactly what happened. So I'm glad we did choose to do the stream today. Um, sorry, I just saw Carbonized. Or no, it's not, sorry, I thought it was Carbonized for a second. My eyes are deceiving me. It is Kimberly in Japan. Hello, Kimberly in Japan. Hi, Kim. Caught alive just before going to bed. I think I will catch up on the replay as usual. Sending love and support. Thank you so much, Kimberly in Japan. I do. I know you are a part of the replay crew. It is so good to see you. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, let me see. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Just looking in the chat with you guys. <laughs> Kyle, what eclipse? I didn't see anything. Yeah, it was East Coast. East Coast people. That's what we saw. It was crazy. It started in Mexico, went over Texas. Mm -hmm. And it was like this like line. Uh, yeah. 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 And then it came up all through Southern Ontario into Quebec and the Maritimes into uh, Newfoundland and that and out. So almost all of Southern Ontario had a pretty good. Yeah viewpoint of it there was a ton of people here yeah it was it was pretty wild but i mean honestly it was kind of odd because we had a lot of cloud cover so mm -hmm. we couldn't really see it that well but it was very strange that it was like within a 15 minute period it went from being like overcast but still very light out to dark very dark like doomsday dark and then 
back to happy <laughs> in like 15 minutes, which was pretty crazy. Like I can only imagine if you didn't know what was happening, oh, what you would have felt like when it got that dark that quickly. Yeah, you would have thought like end of the world. But yes, everyone who thought that the end of the world was yesterday, we're all still here. We made it. <laughs> it was actually really cute. We were outside watching it and a number of houses down, we could hear some kids outside watching and yelling and all excited. Just, oh my gosh! It was like the Troll 2 scene. Yeah. Like, it was really funny. But then at the very end, like, after the sun came back out, I just heard this one kid yeah. just go, do it again! <laughs> it's great. There was also, I don't know if you saw it either, um, producer sister, but we had, like, the Weather Channel on. And there was this lady that was, she was on site, on location somewhere where the the eclipse was supposed to be very visible and there were a lot of clouds where she was and apparently there were people coming up to her yes that were like can you change where the clouds are yes this because of announcer lady like all the weather disasters we have in this world if we could change the weather that's the one and you know it's hurricanes all that intern nah. they've sent out like to the middle of nowhere and she's just like no i don't control the weather <laughs> Did she write the screenplay to Glitter? <laughs> Bonus points to anybody who knows what that's from. But we have we have quite a, a show of stuff to go over today. The Diddy drama just continues and continues and continues. Um, sorry, it was a, Katie Hurst 94, a YouTuber I follow just said she walked out and saw it without realizing some neighbors handed her glasses. I mean, yeah. The amount of stuff, I don't know, if you follow me on Instagram, which if you, you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Um, I, I put a lot of updates there, also just funny stuff, and sometimes like I'll have little side rants or whatever of stuff that I am seeing in the media, and I just want to correct before, or critique before I do a live. Um, I could not believe how many safety things I was seeing from like states saying like, don't drive with eclipse glasses on. Like the blackout glasses. Like if you've never put eclipse glasses on, when you put them on, you can't see anything. Nothing. You can't see it's anything. It's just black. Nothing. The only thing that you see through them is the sun. And I was just like, the fa <sighs> Really, people? Really? The, the stupidity yesterday was off the charts. Absolutely off the charts that I was seeing at points. So uh, I'm glad you guys seem to be doing okay. I hope you all enjoyed it that could see it. And why don't we get into the main stories today? Katie just said, and people still didn't watch it safely. So many friends of mine took pics without camera protection. Yep. <laughs> My favorite was there was a shot of Jason Derulo. Just like, look at <laughs> Jason Rudo. Anyway. And for those who don't know, yes, it can actually do damage to your phone. Yep. It your can. camera. It's not not ideal. If you don't put the glasses in front. Yeah. Alrighty. So stories today. Let's go. This stream is going to include speculation and opinion. And it should not be taken as fact. This is my show where I share my opinion. I am a commentator and that's kind of what I do. I talk about stuff. Um, but if you have questions as to why I have the opinions I do, feel free to check out our source doc that is in the description. It goes over all the links and the stuff that I have looked at that has helped me form my opinions. Please always do your own research. And yeah, sources are in the description and also to give credit where credit is due as well. Hello, YouTube human reviewer. Hi. Um, nothing explicit is going to be shown. We could take... Uh, a lot of precautions on this show to make sure that the things that we put out to the best of our ability are appropriate for this platform. We care about this uh, this community and this platform and we would like to stay on it. Um, viewers, please do not send hate to anybody. I know you guys are usually amazing with that and I'm like very rarely concerned about anything. Um, but yeah, don't, don't, don't send hate. It's not cute. It's not cute. Let's not do that. All right. So the first story today we got to talk about is Jennifer Lopez. Yes, uh, with this whole Diddy drama, it is next to impossible right now to talk about this without Jennifer Lopez coming up. And the main reason that that is happening has to do with a lawsuit from Lil Rod, who was a producer of Diddy's, who has filed a civil suit against him for many a thing. Um, it's quite a, a wild lawsuit. There's over 90 pages in the lawsuit that he has filed. And in that lawsuit, he talks about an incident in 1999 in which uh, Jennifer Lopez and uh, 
Sean Combs were both taken into custody. Uh, Combs had charges that he faced. All uh, charges were dropped against Jennifer. But there were allegations that Jennifer had a pew pew that she brought into a club and there was a pew pew incident in the club and sorry for the trigger words but this is the platform and as as i always say with youtube human reviewer i'm not kidding when i tell you we go to great lengths and we say stuff like pew pew and all that type of stuff we're trying i'm trying i'm trying um to the best of our ability every time <laughs> all right so there was a new report that came out from OK Magazine saying that Jennifer Lopez is horrified by the disturbing accusations against ex Sean Diddy Combs, and she doesn't want to be associated. So there are a few things in this article I thought were interesting, but let's just start going through it. So Sean Diddy Combs legal drama has brought his ex-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez on a dark trip down memory lane. The On the Floor singer who dated the embattled rapper from 1999 to 2001 reportedly isn't loving the memories resurfacing after five essay related lawsuits were filed against her former boyfriend who also remains the subject of other things a lot of many many cars all that type of stuff i think we all are kind of aware at this point of what charges we're looking at right now but again gotta be careful JLo is horrified by all of the accusations a source recently spilled to a news publication more than one week after Combs' Los Angeles and Miami homes were raided by federal homeland security agents. And at the same time, at the same time, I still feel like that's really important to mention. She and Diddy had talked about marriage at one point. Oh, Jen, you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Producer sister, can you imagine? No. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Oh, yuck. Now people want to know why she left him because she left for a reason. What did she see? What she saw? The insider confessed, claiming Lopez gets the shudders every time she's forced to think about their relationship. I mean, I don't blame her. I get <laughs> shudders thinking about the stuff and I wasn't even involved. You know what I mean? Um, I, I feel like that's something we all could probably have in common with Jennifer, right? But I, I think at points looking through any of this stuff, we've been very uncomfortable with what we've heard. The confidant continued she doesn't want to be associated with him at all anymore. Unfortunately, it'll be hard for the Marry Me actress to hide from her ex's disturbing legal accusations as she was specifically named in the most recent lawsuit filed against Combs by Rodney Little Rod Jones, who accused the coming home singer of many things, many, many things. We've talked about this lawsuit. Jones mentioned Lopez when recalling the infamous 1999 Club Pew Pew incident in which both Combs and the Hustler star Jennifer Lopez were arrested. Charges were later dropped against Lopez and Combs was acquitted. Though Jones now alleges Diddy secretively told him that he had been the one and his then girlfriend was the one carrying the pew pew. Good times. She wasn't happy in the relationship, the source stated. I am in shock. I am in shock. Explaining how she only stayed with Combs because she felt he provided her personal security and protection from the various unaliving threats both of them received throughout their romance. And to be honest, like, I kind of get that a little bit. But at the same time, I, I mean, I guess if we look at it from that perspective, if she was in a relationship with him, was constantly having her life threatened, she at that point was not the J-Lo that we know today, right? Like, this is 1999 J-Lo. This is pre, you know, love don't cost a thing. This is you know, pre benefer this is, she was not, when we think about Jennifer Lopez in her heyday, that's not what we're thinking about when we think about 1999, if that makes sense. So she didn't have access to a lot of those things, I would assume at that point. I understand her concern. But at the same time, like, I don't know, my opinion, like, Diddy is, um, Diddy seems dangerous. That's my opinion, right? So is it, I don't know. I kind of feel bad for her on that front. I do. Jen is the first to admit that she has made some very bad decisions, the confidant confessed. She looks at her life today with Ben and is super grateful, the source concluded in reference to Lopez's husband, Ben Affleck, whom she married in the summer of 2022. 
Looking back, the insider admitted Lopez has been aware of the chaotic times she shared with the last night vocalist and at times seems to find herself faced with regret. There were many wild moments with Diddy and it gives JLo the creeps to think that she stayed with him for so long, they detailed. It's an interesting perspective. I think right now Jennifer Lopez is kind of going through a bit of an interesting chapter in her life because in in effort to kind of stay up to date with what is being said in the media right now and I mean new media and legacy media, there definitely is a movement right now, I would say, on TikTok in particular that is uh, they're not happy with Miss JLo. They're really not. And there's a number of reasons for that. Now, some of those reasons, I feel like we've known this for a long time. I, I'm not quite sure why they're making as much of a resurgence now. Um, in particular, there's a lot of people that are criticizing that a lot of the vocals that are on some of her biggest hits are actually not her. But I think anybody that has followed, you know, uh, Ashanti or Christina Milian, for example, like they've been aware that a lot of the hooks that are used in some of her music are not just her vocal. Um, and some people have a lot of feelings about that. But I also look at it and I go like Mariah Carey back in the day was like, you know, well, I could get eight hours of sleep too if, you know, I didn't have to sing my own songs, a shade to her. So like this isn't brand new information to me, but it's definitely catching up with her now. Plus you bring in all these things with Diddy, blah, blah, blah. There's just a lot of people who are not happy with her right now. But I feel like out of all the things you could be really unhappy with her about, her trying to protect herself in a relationship with someone who, in my opinion, is very dangerous like Diddy, I don't feel like that's really the one. Producer Sister, do you see what I mean with that? Like, if if you thought that he was your protector at that point, I wonder what she was experiencing outside of him to drive her to that. Yeah. And that's scary to me. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I don't think she's going to really come forward with any details about any of it. I can't imagine how no. scary that time in her life would have been. But I'm just, I'm trying to to keep a middle road with her here because I understand that it's very popular right now to be, like, really critical of Jennifer and really mean to Jennifer. And to be honest, I think sometimes she's made it really easy um to do that but i'm just trying to be unbiased a bit when i look at this so that is the jennifer lopez side of things up until this point now this is where we get into the, what i would consider the more serious stuff fox put out this report saying that diddy was working hard to protect his brand from being fully eviscerated <laughs> um during this probe and uh yeah, he's uh, he's definitely struggling. He's struggling. Sean Diddy Combs created a powerful legacy in the entertainment industry thanks in part to his mastery of marketing. It was only two weeks ago that Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami were being raided by Homeland Security Investigations in connection with a federal HT probe. Since the raids on March 25th, the music mogul appeared to be living a carefree, living carefree as if his bad boy for life persona never existed. He's working hard to ensure his brand trust isn't fully eviscerated, brand expert Eric Schiffer told Fox News Digital. The promoter in him, he is a master marketer, understands the power of evidence that can work to convince audiences through what's implied and what's implied when he's out riding his bike with a smile or with Stevie J eating food, that things are just fine. And there have been a number of photo ops of him. And to be honest with you, I really didn't think it was worth like a whole big thing on like today's story diddy rides his bike in his home neighborhood and waves at people like I'm, i just please don't if i start doing that every time diddy is seen in public like no no right it's i don't want to go super far into that but he is definitely trying to promote himself as a like everything's great everything's fine Everything is awesome. Everything's so good right now. It's so good. And it's not. We all know it's not. It's not. No no one is doing good after going through what he has had to go through in the past couple of weeks. Um, Schiffer added, that's the message he wants to get across after having SWAT teams at both of his properties in the past two weeks. Exactly. On Thursday, the adult producer cruised around South Florida on two wheels, the bike, and left his exclusive Star Islands abode for some fresh air. Like, that is not a headline! The fact that this was, like, a story bothers me. He Combs, went outside. He went outside. 
Congratulations. Stop the presses, everyone. Uh, Combs 54 was spotted wearing a black t-shirt and shorts to match his black bicycle. Oh, he accessorized effectively with his bike. This is painful. <laughs> as he trekked around town, even stretching his arms out as if he were flying over a bridge at one point. I'm flying, Jack. Like, this is, this is how they're... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a pet peeve of mine with legacy media, and I'm just going to say it. I am just going to say it. This is not a story. This is like, to me, this is something you put in like a paragraph with something like this and only like this. I wouldn't do like a whole story on this myself. That someone took a bike ride. That's just... <laughs> I get it how it matters in this perspective, but it's just ridiculous. And the thing is, as this article has said, they're absolutely right. Diddy is a marketing genius. He knew if he rode a bike and went over a bridge with his arms out like freaking Rose from Titanic that everybody would talk about that. But what we should be talking about is the lawsuits. What we should be talking about is the federal investigation. But no, bikes. Bikes. Earlier this week, the All About the Benjamin Singer returned to social media for the first time since his homes were raided by HSI. Combs shared photos of his one-year-old daughter, Love. His daughter's name is Love, too? Because he's calling himself Brother Love Love right now. That's one of his names. On Easter Sunday, and followed up a few days later with another snap of his little girl standing on a trampoline. On Friday, Diddy shared the full version of his music video for the song Victory, which features cameos from Danny DeVito and the late Dennis Hopper. I think Danny DeVito would like to be excluded from this narrative. Yep. But I'm also sure that there's a lot of people that would like to be excluded from this narrative, and I think we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. In the video, Combs runs through a desolate city to escape armed forces, only to be cornered on a rooftop where he makes the decision to jump instead of being captured. He captured the clip, Bad Boy for Life. His friend Stevie J, rapper The Game, Timbaland, and Ty Dollar Sign showed support on the post. First of all, not surprised about Stevie J, because Stevie J has been like his hype man for the past two weeks. It's... It's a choice. Um, the game does surprise me because I thought that the game was cool with Fiddy. I thought he was a part of G Unit. I got questions about that. Um, Ty Dolla Sign, uh, whatever. Timbaland, though. Timbaland. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed, right? Like, we've talked about Timbaland on this show before. Um, and producer sister and I have not been shy to say that we absolutely have enjoyed some of his music over the years. Um, you know, like that whole promiscuous girl summer, like we, we were bumping that in our car for sure. Um, but then we were really disappointed with when Timbaland made that statement that, uh, Justin should have muzzled Brittany, um, to stop her from sharing her side of the story in her book. I didn't think Timbaland would be able to disappoint me more than that, but here we are today. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Let me know in the chat if you're disappointed in Timbaland. <laughs> I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Stevie J, a longtime friend and collaborator, has been seen out and about with Diddy since the federal raids on Thursday. He shared a video on Instagram showing what a real Diddy party looks like. Okay, and the black and white clip featured a who's who of Hollywood that included snaps of Jay Z mingling with Kanye West and Pharrell, Naomi Campbell, Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, Cardi B, Travis Scott, Post Malone, The Weeknd, Will Smith's son Jaden, Kobe Bryant, Snoop Dogg, and Diddy's close pal Mary J. Lodge, who we know made that post on Instagram the day of the raid saying that she would burn bridges as necessary. So basically the idea with this clip was to be like, this is what a party's really like, not like what's said in the lawsuits. And I think it's also maybe, is it them trying to leverage celebrity friends to know like, if we're going down, you're going down too, was kind of how I might have interpreted it a little bit. But that's just an opinion. That's just an opinion. Well, Diddy appeared untroubled to the outside world. Another story could be unfolding behind closed doors for the music mogul. I bet it is. Well, Diddy appeared to be... Yeah, sorry. I did. Dub I duplicated that. My apologies. Behind the scenes, he's speaking at length with his defense attorneys, his marketing and PR people to anticipate all the things that might happen and prepare for the worst while staying positive and thinking about the things that he can affect. 
a lot right now is not in his control. It's in the control of the Southern District of New York prosecutors. That is a terrifying sentence. <laughs> Oh, Southern District of New York. Ah, as many stars showed up in the video, his lengthy roster of celebrity friends seem to remain quiet and have yet to show their support for Diddy as he faces claims of bad things across multiple lawsuits. This is this is the quote. This is why I kept this article. This here we go. He's like rat poison right now. It's a giant dumpster fire and a threat to their brand's survival. If they're associated or if it brings out their own skeletons, it could be the kiss of death. I just want to say, because I say this probably too much about things being a dumpster fire. It makes me so happy when other people use that analogy. Because <laughs> I feel like it's just too appropriate. This whole situation is a dumpster fire. This is a dumpster fire that overflowed from the dumpster and has spread to the parking lot. And now a bunch of cars are on fire. That's what's going on. The parking lot is on fire. He added, it's extremely dangerous to a star when you have such serious allegations of bad things and prosecutors and the HSI that are looking through everything. And considering there are a lot of allegations that he filmed everything, that could be, depending upon what someone may have been associated with, career threatening. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. A little scary. Diddy was also named in the new lawsuit filed on Thursday against his son, Christian Combs. Um, we're going to talk about that more in a minute. Um, but he is named in four similar suits filed in the last four months in November. What happened with Cassie, right? We've talked about that, that Combs vehemently denied Cassie's claims and that they settled within 24 hours. So, what is this other lawsuit? This, I think, is going to be the fun story to watch over this week, to be honest with you. Last week, it was reported that a lawsuit was filed in the Superior Court of Los Angeles, I believe April 4th, uh, from uh, a woman named Grace, I believe, who was being represented by the same lawyer who was representing Little Rod in that whole lawsuit. But the thing is, Lawsuit was filed on April 4th, according to sources that I've seen. I still can't find this lawsuit, guys. I'm looking. I, I am actively looking. And I, I know people are trying to talk to other people to see if we can find this lawsuit. Um, because it has been like a nightmare to locate. And I don't understand quite why. But... This is where it gets interesting. So Diddy lawyer slams lawsuit against son Christian Combs expect the same kind of manufactured lies. A lawyer for Sean Diddy Combs and his youngest son Christian Combs, King Combs, sometimes referred to, has slammed the attorney representing the woman accusing King of SA. Aaron Dyer, who is a defense attorney, I believe he's actually former federal prosecutor. So he's a pretty, pretty serious lawyer at this point. Um, sorry. Caution the public to meet the potential lawsuit with skepticism, pointing the finger at the accuser's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn. This is where it gets interesting. We may not have seen the woman's claim, but I'm sure we can expect the same kind of manufactured lies, just as we saw in the Roddy Jones lawsuit, which has yet to be served, Dyer said in a statement to us weekly. So again, this is April 8th. Okay, this is yesterday yet to be served, but it was filed on the 4th, according to other sources. So are you telling me that this lawsuit was filed almost like a week ago and these people haven't seen it yet and it still hasn't leaked to the media? That's sus to me. That's sus to me. My own personal bias does believe that Diddy is guilty of the things he has been accused of. However, when I'm seeing shenanigans like this, I can't ignore it. And it would be ridiculous of me to not point out that this particular attorney, that this is sus. There's a lot of sus going on right now. And I'm trying to be very careful about the way that I look at this. But this is apparently what the lawsuit states. Grace claims that King essayed her. While well, she was working on a yacht that his father chartered in 2022, King's father is charged in the same suit. Oh, King's father is charged in the same suit for the premises liability for aiding and abetting King and the alleged A. 
Blackburn was just slapped by a federal judge in New York earlier this week for her pattern of behavior in improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention. That is not spin. That is exactly what happened. Um, over on Popcorn Planet, we actually went through um, that letter, and it is it is brutal. It is absolutely brutal. Um, so, cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Dyer continued. So this is kind of my point. It's hard to... <laughs> I just saw Andy pop in. I saw the message. I didn't want to say anything. I'm so excited right now. This part of why I'm I'm like talking really, really fast. Popcorn just said, heads up. We got the official legal docs and exclusive. We will be live when Kim is done. Kim, welcome to join. I would absolutely love to. And as soon as I'm done here, I tried to start the show earlier because I didn't want to go like in the same time because usually you guys don't go till like after two or three. So that's part of why we went earlier today. But yes, I will be there. I will be there if you will have me because I am so ready to see this. Like I really, really am because the first one was, um, a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. We'll see you there, man. I'll see you there. Um, okay. So we will see this lawsuit, but I think you guys know what I mean though, that like the, the route in which we have taken to get to this point is not normal. Producer sister, do you know what I'm saying? Am I, yeah. am I explaining this correctly in that sense? It's not normal that it would be this difficult. Yeah. And you'd have to go through many, so many hoops and so few outlets have gotten it. Yeah. Like we look at these other legal places like that we would expect them to have it almost immediately when it's filed. You would think. Not a week later. Like, why did it get held back? And I mean, I understand that that Diddy is not the main focus of this lawsuit, but he is still implicated. This yeah. did happen on his yacht. And I feel like considering his other son, Justin, has also been implicated in a prior suit as well. One of the civil suits that is mainly directed at Diddy. This is all relevant. And this is kind of the thing as we, we've joked about in the past um, on our last show I uh, had an image of the scene in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia of Charlie and his whole freak out about Pepe Silvia and how like that's what this story has very much been. It's it is not one single lane of thought or one single situation. This is a web. This is a web that has been going on for about 30 years at this point. Um, and uh, I, I could tell you <laughs> what, what night was it? It was was it a. Uh... Was it Sunday night, Sunday producer night. sister? I was watching a documentary and I, I made a connection to something and I like ran down the stairs and I'm yelling at producer sister like, what if this is connected to this and this is connected to this? And I'm like, there's so much. There's so much. And there's stuff I need to show you too. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. A different tangent of this web. It just, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't and that's stop. Why, and it's so serious. It's so incredibly serious. So any lawsuit right now that is even in the vicinity of this has the potential to be so intertwined. Yes. I think that's why. Like, 100%. Because to be clear, there has been a source that has stated, according to Homeland um, Security Investigations, that everything past and present is currently on the table. So it's not exaggeration to say that looking back at the East Coast, West Coast rivalry would potentially be included in this. The um, the loss of Biggie and Tupac could potentially be included in this. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. But yes, it does seem that some of this lawsuit, I would agree with Dyer, that it was uh, improperly filed in federal court to gain media attention in Paris defendants and with salacious allegations to pressure defendants to settle quickly, which I do see because it's like, it's going after Diddy's son right? It's putting pressure on Diddy that, hey, you going to defend your son? You going to pay us and make us shut up? Like, that's kind of how it feels like to me. It feels a bit intimidating. Dyer, and that's my opinion. That's my opinion, my speculation, to be clear. Dyer is referring to a court filing by Judge Denise Cote that suggests Blackburn has a history of filling lawsuits aimed at attracting media attention to pressure high-profile defendants into quickly settling. And I'm going to take a moment here and just say that when I did my show a couple weeks ago, I think, and I talked about the little Rod and me case, and I also talked about it on Popcorn, I cannot tell you how many people said to me that I shouldn't share my opinion about whether or not I felt that this case was written for the media. 
and saying like, oh, that's probably like a bad take or whatever. The judge agrees with me. Okay. Just want to lay that down. <laughs> Blackburn has faced similar accusations in the past, including from lawyers representing Nicki Minaj, T.I., and Tiny, who accused him of participating in a sordid shakedown campaign to extract settlements from the artists. Two days after he was referred to the disciplinary committee of the Southern District of New York, same district that is investigating Diddy at this time, it's interesting that he chose to file a new sort, the new suit in California. Hmm. Dyer's statement concludes, it's just another page from that same playbook as we learned of this lawsuit the same way anyone hears about Mr. Blackburn's filings through the media. And again, yeah, he's not wrong. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not Team Diddy or Team King or Team Justin or any of that, right? I'm not saying, but this is messed up. This is messed up. And I don't think it's helping you know, the rest of the cases. I don't think it's helping the other Jane Doe's and I don't want to say their names. Like, I don't think it's helping in that whole situation. King broke his silence on the matter on March 29th. I love this days after he was detained and later released by law enforcement. He posted a message via Snapchat. Seriously? Yeah. That read, stop with the cap. Because cap is slang for lying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't imagine getting hit with like a lawsuit and Homeland Security and everything else. And your response is, I'm going to go on Snapchat and use an emoji. <laughs> I, I hope you guys understand why that's funny to me. It's just, it's the absurdity of this case. You can't write this stuff. You know what I mean? The lawsuit comes at a time where Diddy is facing many accusations himself and is a subject of a federal probe investigating many bad things. Diddy has denied all of the allegations, even as the Department of Homeland Security raided his mansions. He has not been charged or arrested in connection to the federal investigation. To be clear, innocent until proven guilty. So until I take a look at those new documents, which I will take a look at on popcorn today, which um, I will uh, let you guys uh, know when that's going on. I'll try to send out a community post or something so you guys know. Um, also, if you are not subscribed to Popcorn Planet or my friend Steph the Alternate or anybody else that like Linda's link is in there, Lewis's link is in there, they're all in the description. You're welcome to subscribe to them, um, my little internet family. So it's it's interesting. This, this is just going to get more and more interesting. This is wild. And with that, we're in halftime. Producer sister. Yes. Are, are you ready for this lawsuit? I'm afraid. I'm not ready. <laughs> Like I want to, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like I want to watch it. I want to. I want to read it. I'm. I'm leaning towards it's going to be more comical than serious lawsuit. But you know what really upsets me the most about that, which it shouldn't be. No, exactly. I'm not. I don't take pleasure in that. No, it's like if so. The 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 woman who's come forward with these accusations, um, her name's Grace, and if Grace. If Grace's story is is the truth, and to be honest with you, like I have reason to doubt the lawyer, but I don't have reason to no. doubt her. I don't know her, and I don't want to discredit her in her story. Um, and I would also understand if you are, you know, someone who, you know, took a a job working on a a yacht. You know, you're probably not rolling in the dough here or in power, and then you want to go up against a billionaire's son for what he did to you. If that is the truth, like it must be terrifying for her absolutely terrifying and then you end up with this lawyer that's like a dumpster fire but how many lawyers would be willing to take this case right how much that you money? could afford exactly like i feel like she's in a really difficult position if that is the case but it's just i just hope that the nonsense and the buffoonery of some of these people does not destroy the possibility of survivors getting justice if that makes sense. That really, that really, really bothers me and is frustrating. Well, guys, I cannot believe how many of you are here on a time that we normally do not stream, yeah. on a day we normally do not stream. <laughs> it is so good to see everybody. Please consider hitting that like button. Please make sure you're subscribed if you have not. Um, if you are interested in more of my content or you really like being here, consider joining the Space Angels or gifting memberships or all that type of stuff. It's so good to have all of you 
here. Kimberly in Japan just joined as a member. Thank you so much. I know you're amazing. You're amazing. I've seen Kimberly off and on, but I think because of the time zones, it's always like we miss each other. It's, it's rough. It's like Pokeroo for my, my Canadians up in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly in Japan is Pokeroo. Alrighty. Okay. Let me see here. Oh, Kyle just said my meeting fell through. So yay, I'm here. It's always good. When that happens. Yay. I do not miss those. I'm not going to be honest with you. I, yeah, I, I don't miss it. Okay, Silky, missing my training for Kim. Okay, don't neglect your job. <laughs> you guys are too funny. All the meetings we have all been in that oh. should have been emails. I don't miss that. I don't miss that. Not at all. Honestly, though, where I've worked, we've been pretty good. Yeah, I've had places where it wasn't. <laughs> but I think there, there definitely were meetings booked to uh, kind of break up the day sometimes, too. Like, to to give a break from stuff, to be honest. General Scott, thank you so much for the five gifted memberships. And then an additional gifted membership. So you gifted six, which brings us to 11. So we are still Team uh, Odd. 12. The, 12. Right, because Kimberly. So yeah. we, we have 12. 12 gifted memberships. That's awesome. Well, 11 gifted, and then Kimberly got hers. Yes. Uh, Katie Artist yeah. 94 just sent the dancing hippo emoji. Thank you so much. Hey, she's staying up. She's still here. <gasps> Yay, Kimberly! <laughs> she's still here. That's so awesome. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and then Doro has been a member for six months. Thank you so much with little emojis of Lacey and Charlie. Well, we do need to keep moving in the show because we have we have a fun what the what today. We have a follow-up to last Monday's yes, What the What. Yes, we do. We do. And um, I know that I want to oh be, goodness. respectfully, I need to be uh, off in good time because I know that my friend Andy will be going on. And I'm excited for that stream. You can catch me over there as well if you want. Um, so we got to stay on schedule today. We can't just go forever and ever and ever, unfortunately. Kimberly in Japan also just gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. And does that bring us to 17? 17. 17. We are back to Team Odd. Thank you so much, Kimberly in Japan. It is so good to see you. It's awesome when you are here. But I, I know with the time zone, if you need to go to bed or, or do whatever you got to do, that's totally fine. We and understand. We understand. And I so appreciate <laughs> your support. Um, there will be timestamps available at the end of this if you need to watch on the replay. And that's yeah. part of why I do the timestamps and I do the chapters for the replay crew because I care about you guys. And I hope that you guys still enjoy the show and have fun. Um, there we go. Rob Wilson just asked, I wonder if the feds will make R. Kelly an offer for information for a reduced sentence. Mm. Well, R. Kelly did actually make a really weird statement um, about this whole thing. It was something to the effect of like, he's like, I know what they did to me. So I don't believe anything they're saying about Diddy. And I'm like, <laughs> oh boy, how are you still in denial? How is this man still in denial? Blows my mind. Blows my mind. All right, everybody. Are we ready for what the what? Shall we do what the what? We need your help. We do. We need your help. This is an interactive one. This is an interactive one. So if you are in the chat, it is time. It is time to have some fun here. Um, last week, we did a what the what called explain a movie plot badly. Yeah, I believe. So it was like there is a description of a film and you have to kind of guess what it is but the way that it's written tends to be quite humorous same concept but now television so my tv fans now now it's your turn now it is your turn so let's go let's have some fun because i have the feeling it's going to get serious as we go through this day what and we just talked about was really serious we need to laugh yeah i will say on this one there are some shows in here that i know kim has not watched I'm not so, a big TV person, yeah. in all honesty. So I, there was no way I was going to get something that was everything she knew. Um, there are TV shows here in all different genres, including reality, cartoon, all those kind of things. They are from all different decades. I believe I only have one repeated, and there's two for it. Oh, okay. The rest of them are all, once you see it, it's gone. Um, Can you let us know? Or I guess we'll know. You'll know. Yeah, we'll know. Okay. Yeah. I, all right. I'm, I've looked at it so much over the last couple of days. Oh yeah. my gosh. This thing took me forever. 
All right. So <laughs> Samantha Lee also just gifted a membership. Thank you so, so much. As well as Bob, King Bob, like Bond, James Bond. Uh, thank you very much. But who's from the cat? I'm sorry. I feel like I just exposed you. <laughs> no, thank you very much, King Bob. I so appreciate it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, sir, I just said R. Kelly is living in his own la-la land. He's in Delulu. He's in the land of Delulu. The Salulu is not the Delulu. Mm -mm. Okay, so here we go. Let's have fun with it. References, yeah, we have a lot of references. One. Links are in the uh, description. There was a lot. Okay, so the first one. When her father passes, Lizzie is stuck taking over the family business as a working mom in the 1950s. Which show are we talking about? Let me know. Because i that's not coming to my mind, producer sister, at all. I don't think you've watched it. I don't think definitely I heard either. of it. While you guys are making your guesses, I will say thank you so much to Diff Me Buyers for gifting five memberships. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much, producer sister, dare I ask. I'm just right. Now. We are at 24. All right. Sounds good. We're team even. Thank you very much, everybody. 24 is pretty cool. That's awesome. So I just guessed a Cinderella story. Oh my gosh, Billy Cat. I think you might have it. The crown. Oh my gosh, is it the crown? Is it the crown? It's the crown! Oh my gosh! Okay, so you guys get what we're doing here, right? It's it's very silly. What an insane way to describe <laughs> <laughs> Queen Elizabeth and her reign. <laughs> took over the family business <laughs> that's the vibe of this i hope we're all on the same page that's a great one to start with yeah i thought that, it was good oh my gosh General i enjoyed Scott, thank that you so one. much for the gifted membership as well and never says to 25 yeah we're back to team odd thank you very much sir so yeah. appreciate it that some of them are more obvious yeah. some of them are take a little bit more thought some of them are just referencing a specific storyline in a show <laughs> yeah all sorts of different stuff yeah all right but all meant in fun Multiple women with a quarter-life crisis coming together to fight for a guy they've never met. Sex in the City? Nope. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, To fight for a guy they've never met. I don't know. Or is it is it The Bachelorette? That, that could be a little women. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Charlie's Angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with The Bachelor. I think it's The Bachelor. And thank you very much, Samantha Lee, who just got us back into Team Even with 26 memberships, and Tiffany that just gave us another one, getting us back into Team Odd. You guys are amazing. I'm I'm gonna go. I gotta say The Bachelor. It's The Bachelor. Oh, <laughs> that's whoever wrote that. That was great. That was great. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. Me and my stubborn friends with a desperate need for attention in a couple of years. In a couple of years. For you, it'd be more than a couple. Can you give us a hint? Um, the cat, the main cast is all female. Oh, is it Golden Girls? Maybe? We're gonna say <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> uh, the Wonder Years is a guess. Uh, Friends is a guess. It's the Golden Girls. I got it! Yay! Yay! There we go. There we go. That's fun. A guy with super speed constantly loses to non-speedsters. He always requires non-speedsters to tell him how to use his powers. Is it the Flash? <laughs> My guess is it's the Flash. I'm waiting to hear your guys' guesses. Yeah, Katie's like, Flash! Flash! <laughs> Kyle, Flash! The Flash! It's the Flash. That is kind of funny, though. Yeah. Not gonna lie. That is, like... Yeah. All the help that is needed. Man forces his kids to listen for hours on end to stories about him and his friends drinking good sex and things without leaving out any cruelly detail. How I Met Your Mother. It's gotta be How I Met Your Mother. The 
I will say, like, great show, but the concept of it is bizarre. Yeah. It is absolutely bizarre. Oh, gosh. Charmed is a guest. I guess, um, yeah, Kyle just gets time with your mother. Tiffany gets shameless. Yeah, we got a lot of it's time with your mother. <laughs> what? <laughs> Danny. <laughs> dramatics that have obviously been written and staged i mean i'm gonna go with either punked or jack a nope no no Mm -mm. any guesses everyone because those are my two you have seen this show survivor nope rob gets I'm going to give it another minute, you guys. In chat. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're not wrong, Jackie. I don't think you're wrong. Big Brother is a guess. Jersey Shore is a guess. The Kardashians, The Hills, SNL, Entourage. We have seen the answer. Top Model. Okay. It is keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> I was actually laughing this weekend because uh, Chloe, or not Chloe, uh, Courtney Kardashian put out a post, um, and I was actually very happy for her because she uh, she w- put out a post about kind of body acceptance after having a baby, and just kind of while her sisters are all posting these pictures of them looking like flawless and perfect on the beach, and Courtney's just like, "This is my body. I just had a kid." Yay. And like, I, I agree with that. She also kind of threw some shade at the Kim. There's people who are dying because they were at the beach, which was glorious. <laughs> Grown adults bring along their school project and ask for money. <laughs> Is that Shark Tank? <laughs> Please tell me it's Shark Tank. <laughs> I used to watch that show so much. Oh my gosh. I was obsessed. Oh, okay. I'm waiting to see some guesses from you guys. They should be coming through shortly. Dragon's Den. I mean, fair. Yeah, it could very well be, Rob. Shark Tank, Dragon's Den. Oh, it's Shark Tank. It's Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Medora Hart, why are they still fam- so famous? I still don't understand. I assume the Kardashians. Marketing genius. Marketing genius. Yep. Shark Tank. I put the both there because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're basically the same show. They are, pretty much. Once, yeah. like, Dragon's Den is the Canadian version. So. Oh, okay. An affectionate family that doesn't do well at weddings. You know this. Is this Game of Thrones? <laughs> is this sick reference? to the red wedding i can hear you laughing i'm gonna go with this game of thrones (laughs) for those of you that don't know i i honestly i have like in the words of jamie lee curtis i have trauma when it comes to (laughs) game of thrones i uh sarai that's excellent though say yes to the dress that's that that, uh, um no, I, uh, I I am still not over the end of Game of Thrones, and I don't think I ever will be. I, I have never been so devastated by a, a TV show ending in my life. I feel personally victimized, and I know many, many people did. Just, if you're going to watch Game of Thrones and you haven't before, don't, don't watch the last season. Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah, Game of Thrones... <laughs> There are multiple weddings things don't go well at. A show about four people who can't commit to anything other than each other, a cafe, and nothing. Not that there is anything wrong with that. Hmm. Hmm. There is a clue in there. 
four people. Yep. So like I, Rosa just guessed friends, but I don't it's think it's friend. friends because there's six of them. Seinfeld? Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's Seinfeld. It is Seinfeld. Because it's the four of them. Yeah. Right? Because it's, is it George, Elaine, Jerry, and Kramer? Kramer, yeah. Yeah, so it's four of them. Real life D and D simulation. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a minute for that one. I know we got a lot of nerds up in here, so let's let's go. Oh gosh, um, real life D and D. Is it live action? Yes. Okay. Because the problem is my brain goes into like um like anime mode no it's not an anime yes okay okay the guild stranger things is a guess big bang theory is a guess lord of the rings um have we seen it yes okay it is stranger things good job doro sounds good sounds good Little House on the Prairie meets the Dick Van Dyke show with a touch of friends thrown into the mix for good measure. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> this description was so... <laughs> that sounds like an abomination. <laughs> what even am I... What is that? Vikings. <laughs> Somebody suggested... Um... Yeah, exactly. Hard rides. I'm eh. Um, anyone have any guesses? Because I I am stumped. Shit's Creek. <laughs> nope. No. Corner gas. <laughs> My fella, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Okay, let's let's we'll go. It's a Big Bang Theory. How is the little house on the prairie? I'm guessing because of like Amy, and then. Penny was in Nebraska? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting discuss description. But I mean, it, I mean, I guess you could say, like, I think a lot of the Big Bang Theory is a lot getting thrown against the wall. Yeah. In all honesty, and seeing what sticks. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. A whole family slowly learns to love their neighbor who has stinky feet. What? You've seen this show. I've seen this show? Yeah. Um, Alf, but Alf wasn't their neighbor. Right? Like, Alf lived with them. Full House? Oh! Like, Kimmy Gibbler? It's Full House. It is Full House. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we're going to do a few more. And then I'm going to have to stop. Um, we've got tons to go through still. Um, but we I am going to have to go over to Popcorn soon. Um, just so you guys know. So we'll do a couple more. Um, and then we will we will wind down. I'm so happy you guys have been here today. It's amazing. I so, I so appreciate it. Can do the rest tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do the rest tomorrow. Impoverished family <laughs> struggles to live within their means while staying rent-free at a local motel. That would be Shit's Creek. There it is. That is Shit's Creek. <laughs> Sorry. Which, by the way, if you have not seen, you need to. Just even simply just for a little bit of Lexus. Yes. If you have not seen a little bit of Lexus, Alexis, you need to. There was a reel on Insta the other day, and it was this little girl singing it. <laughs> and she was trying to do the dance. She might have been like two. It was la, so la, la, funny. La, 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 la. A little bit of Lexus. I think, honestly, Kelly Clarkson doing it is my favorite thing yes, in the world Yes, when now. she did it with Annie. Oh, my gosh. Like, just perfection. Perfect. Perfection. All right. Mother daughter talk really fast to escape family obligations. I I know I know what that one is. Give you guys a minute, but I know what that one is. I think it starts with a G. We quoted it earlier in the show. Yep. She brought the screenplay to glitter. 
it is Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. Wancho got it. It is Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. Yes. Controls the weather and wrote the screenplay to glitter. Four gender fluid alien toddlers and their baby son got attempt to entertain children. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> this is my new favorite description of this show. <laughs> is this <a> Teletubbies? <laughs> Stop! Are you serious? (laughs) The only thing missing from this description is they don't talk about Nunu. I will not tolerate the Nunu disrespect. Their vacuum cleaner. Go to the picture. (laughs) Nunu! I got you Nunu in the picture. We have a love of Nunu in this house. I... (laughs) I literally actually have a playlist for myself, just a, like a private one on Spotify, called that new new that's spelt like new new um, for my new music. So I, I will literally just open up that playlist, and there's a lovely picture of new new hanging out there. <laughs> new new and tubby toe. That's why it's the grainy picture because <laughs> I was trying to find one with new new in it. <laughs> oh, adults play hangman for money. What? Is that like Wheel of Fortune? Is it it Wheel of Fortune? (laughs) One show has been a member for 18 months, my bro. All my love and support to my YouTube sibling. Yes, my brother. Thank you so much, One show. I so appreciate that. You guys are amazing. And watch, honestly, Wancho's a real one. Wancho is a real one. Okay, I've had a few people that are like, Wheel of Fortune! Who's lying? Uh, Survivor, Jeopardy, has it been said? Yes, it's been said. It is Wheel of Fortune. Yay! Okay, I think we're going to do like two more. If you didn't know how to play chess before, you still won't. (laughs) What? (laughs) I don't think you've seen this one. If you have, you've never talked about it to me. I don't think I've seen it. I'm going to give you guys a minute to guess. Okay, Queen's Gambit seems to be coming out pretty strong. It's the Queen's Gambit. Okay. I have not seen it. I have not seen it. Should I? Let me know, chat. Let me know if I should. Last one for today. They don't know where they are, what is happening, and neither does the audience. <laughs> I don't know. Do I know this show? I don't know if you ever watched it, but you definitely know of it. Oh, is it lost? It's lost. <laughs> there you go. And honestly, as much as I never watched the show, to anyone that was personally victimized by the ending of that show, I extend my broken Game of Hearts thrown, like Game of Thrones fan heart to you. I feel like we probably could relate to each other. That's why I, I don't think you watched it, but we definitely knew about it. I think everyone knew it. when I'm it not ended. It. <laughs> I thought about watching it, and then when it ended, I heard what happened, and I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I'm not no. investing that much time into it." No. Oh, that was awful. Exactly. It's in the same group as Game of Thrones. And the How I Met Your Mother finale. Oh, yeah. The How I Met Your Mother finale was just dead. Ugh. <sighs> Terrible. Like, it's... I, I think my favorite thing about the Game of Thrones one, as it all fell apart, was, like, the creators, I think, made some type of a statement kind of saying, if I'm remembering this correctly, that, like, the fans were just unhappy that it wasn't, like fan service at the end type thing that it wasn't just like a happy ending and they were like what were you expecting kind of thing I'm like well I wasn't expecting a fully happy ending but what I can tell you was I wasn't expecting a complete 180 with Daenerys's character becoming the bad leader of Germany yeah taking my feminist queen hero how dare you how dare you <laughs> I, I I don't know why we're, we're quoting Peach You're so cool. (laughs) With my star, we're gonna rule. Because the actress in Queen's Gambit is Princess Peach. Oh, okay. Okay. 
understand. <laughs> that song is a bop, and I don't even care. I don't even care. And I honestly, like, I think about certain things in pop culture that, like, when we're old and rolling around nursing homes, like, the stuff that's randomly going to come out of our mouths, and the staff is going to be like, they're losing it. It's done. And I think about, like, stupid stuff like the, uh, I was joking with producer's sister yesterday about uh, the Taylor Swift um, mm -hmm. crowd like uh, chants and stuff they do. So like there's the mm -hmm. one part in Bejeweled where Taylor says, by the way, and then the where audience you going, says, Taylor? where are you going, Taylor? And then she goes, I'm going out tonight. Right? Like it's stuff like that. It's so, like the song's on on the radio and you just hear all these old people going, where are you going, Taylor? <laughs> And all the staff just looks around and I, well, I don't know why I can just kind of see the, like, um, like the idea of everybody sitting in that, like the, the main room of the nursing home all going peaches, 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 for no reason, just because. <laughs> exactly, Teresa, Charlie, which Charlie though? Are we talking Charlie bit my finger or Charlie the unicorn? Because it could go both ways. <laughs> It will go both ways with oh, you. Oh, gosh, Katie Harris. Yeah, I've never cried over the betrayal of a character before Daenerys. I have to tell you, I saw a Reddit thread that spoiled the ending of the show. And when I read it, I literally laughed out loud. I laughed out loud because I thought it was so insane. Even the idea <laughs> of it, of just like, okay, who wrote this demented fan fiction? There's no way. No way. No way the higher-ups at HBO would be like, that's the ending we're going to accept. And then I just sat there in complete disbelief of like, no. No, no. <laughs> Teresa, unicorn. Charlie the unicorn. Candy Mountain. Mm -hmm. It's a magical Leo Pleroda. <laughs> Thank you, Man Fanda. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Katie, I refuse it as well. We we will. I don't. I don't acknowledge its existence. And in, in canon, I do not. I do not. And honestly, I think that's part of why George R. R. Martin is so terrified of write like of writing the next books. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Cue the music from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Thank you, Kyle. Do 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 do. All right, everybody. Well, I am planning on seeing you guys again tomorrow. Um, regular time, pretty sure. Mm -hmm. pretty sure yeah and we will continue with the what the what and finish that off because there's a lot and we'll probably be giving uh my uh after i slept on it thoughts about this lawsuit that is about to come out um i am curious if it will redirect if i can redirect to popcorn let me see here i've i have not tried this before we're, we're gonna he hasn't it. started streaming yet it's still a countdown yeah but i don't know if it can still or not There it is. Okay. It is locked in. So I don't know if it's going to work. So what I'll do, um, what I would appreciate is I'm going to leave a pinned comment in the comments and I will put the link to popcorn in there. If you guys, when it's over, same as always, if you could please leave a comment at the end of this stream, it so helps me with the algorithm. It lets YouTube know that there is interaction with this as a standalone video as well as a live stream. And then I will hopefully see you guys all over on Popcorn in a few minutes. I don't know exactly when we're starting. We're running on Andy time, which for those of you that don't know, my friend Andy, timing not the best. <laughs> and I, I don't think he would be offended with me saying that in the least. Um, so I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for all of the support. All the love today. Where did we end up with gifted memberships? 28. Fantastic. Even. Welcome to the 28 new members. <clears throat> it is so good to see you all. Welcome to the Space Angels. And I will see you all tomorrow. And for some of you, if any of you want to follow me over to Popcorn, I will see you all very soon. Much love to you. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know if you want to say goodbye, producer sister. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>